Welcome to the Chains Out Podcast. I'm your host, Brent Ernst, with my boy, Carlos Rodriguez. <laughs> Awful weekend in the NFL. <laughs> it was absolutely devastating. We'll get to that. Uh, talk about our gigs. You were in... Uh, Laughlin. Laughlin. Uh, yeah. I was in uh, Janesville, Wisconsin. Dope little club, by the way. Oh, yeah. And then, um, yeah, man, we'll get caught up. Uh, first off, uh, devastated, bro. Cowboys loss was devastating. And... What makes it even worse, and this is what I want to open our topic with, is the the, the rules to shit talking. Okay, <laughs> now first of all, I made a li- I got a list of all the teams that haven't won a Super Bowl uh, since before Dallas won their last one. Okay, that's not even the point. If your team doesn't make the playoffs, if your team's eliminated just like Dallas was in the first round, how? Why do you think you've You can talk shit. You can't talk shit. You can talk shit if you want. You just lose credibility. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, Eagle fans, you were talking shit for 26 hours and then you get eliminated. You you fell apart. You didn't win the NFC East. And then your only response is, well, we won a Super Bowl in 2018. Who the fuck cares? (laughs) You got one ring in your whole existence. And that's the other thing. No, not I don't bring up our old Super Bowls. I don't care. All right, that was 27 years ago. I'm talking about now. It was gross. And you're fucking right. Not you. Give you props. All right, but you guys haven't won a Super Bowl in 40 fucking years, and I got Raider fans talking shit. I got Dolphin fans talking shit that got blown out. It's just amazing the hate that people have for the Dallas Cowboys, and I don't know what it is, why we're always on your mind. Uh, may, uh, now, is it our fans? Because uh, let me let me tell you something. Niner fans are obnoxious as shit. Eagle fans are obnoxious as shit. It just seems like the whole fucking NFL takes pleasure in Dallas losing. Even Stephen A. Smith, which I know, his Steelers oh, yeah. got eliminated. He's right? an Eagles fan, though, isn't he? He's I thought cool. he's a Steelers no, fan. No, he's a Philadelphia Eagles fan. Is he? Yeah. No, he's Steelers, I think. I, I would like to look All right, I'll, I'll look that up. Go ahead. Respond <laughs> to that while we look. Well, uh, Ernst is in rare form today. Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't I don't talk shit uh, at all about anybody else's team. I may hate on the 49ers here and there on, on, on here, but it's because I got cousins that are fucking pieces of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but most of the time I don't even go online. I actually got in trouble by family members because when they lost the Super Bowl, I, I, that's when I started going in on online. Uh, Cause I was like, you give a writer time to write, man. I was like, just fucking going hard. And they were like, you're being rude. You're being mean. But they're the type of fans. That's the only problem I don't like. I was telling you earlier, they're the type of fans that will watch a whole fucking Raider game and comment to me or com or post online. I would never watch a whole 49er game at all. I, I don't even really care to watch it when it's on the red zone. But I don't think you guys seconds. I don't think there's a team in professional sports that gets as much hate as the Cowboys. I really don't. And you know, it's not like really who? Who look at all the memes that are coming. Nobody's doing memes about the Eagles losing. Nobody's doing memes about Miami getting ran out. Poor mm-hmm. Cleveland, you know, which yeah. is just par for the course. Mm-hmm. Just every, and by the way, rightfully so. They're very comical. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it's funny that Dallas has this season and then they lose like they do. It, it's just fitting. It, it, it's, you know, but I'm just over it, man. Yeah. I'm just over this team. I'm over everything. <laughs> <laughs> they are all talking about I that. forgot what I was looking at. Oh, oh. Phil, yeah, he's an Eagles fan, but that's not what I was looking up. I oh. forgot. It was something else. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, no, the... um. They were talking about that, too, on Sports Center and, like, the talking head shows, how the... Uh, Cowboys definitely always are under the uh, microscope about losing or about like, you know, are they going to have other coach da, da, da. yet? Like 49ers, like they'll, they, they lose just as much. As a matter of fact, they lost in the Super Bowl and you know, no one's talking about firing Mike Shanahan or any of that shit. It's, it's, <clears throat> it's crazy, man. Uh, yeah. Dallas is the number two most hated team. Who's number one? Uh, Yankees and number three of the Lakers. So those are all your teams, right? Except no, for the Lakers. No, you like the, the Yankees. Way. Yeah. Yeah. And you like the Dallas and who else you like? Who you uh, like on basketball? I, I like the heat. Oh, you like the Heat? Yeah, okay. I like the Miami Heat. Um, and, you know, look, Yankees, you can make an argument for when. Here's the other thing that bothers me. If Dallas hasn't been to a Super Bowl in 27 years, and we still have more, we're tied with the Niners and Steelers, and the, the Niners haven't won. Here, I'll, I'll, here's the list. These are all the teams that have not won Super Bowls 
How about the collapse of the Eagles, man? That's crazy. That's I almost, know, and and they're still talking shit. <laughs> that's almost as worse as right. when the A's did it. Cardinals have gone 76 years without a title. Lions, 65 years. They never won a Super Bowl. Vikings, 63 years. Never won a Super Bowl. Falcons, 58 years. Never won a Super Bowl. Chargers, 58 years. Never won a Super Bowl. Uh, Titans, who were the Oilers, they said 58 years. Never won a Super Bowl. Browns never won a Super Bowl in 58 years, haven't won a championship. Bills, 57 years. Bengals, 56 years. Jets, 55. Dolphins, 49 fucking years. <laughs> 49. Uh, Raiders, 40 years. It's been. 40. 40. The Bears, 38. Washington, 32. Panther, I can go on and on. 49ers, 28 years, and then Dallas is 27. Now, here's the other thing. If they haven't won a Super Bowl in 27 years, how come nobody's caught up already? <laughs> nobody's caught up. Why haven't all these teams caught up? <laughs> I mean, it was just an utter implosion. It was. I, I don't know if you watched the game. It was just. I watched it all the way and left about. Once Once they put the backup in for Jordan Love, uh, I was like, all right. And then I went to, because uh, I'm getting ready for the show. My show started at 7. Uh so I went and took a shower, and um, I came back out, and they they scored like twice in like garbage time, right, or some Dude, shit? Dude, it was crazy, man. Who, Dallas? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean. <clears throat> I thought they were going to come back from it. Look, a lot of people want to blame Dak. Dak didn't have a stellar game, but it was our defense that shit the bed. I mean, mm -hmm. how the hell do you? Dude, man, they made Jordan Love look fucking clean, And bro. by the way, he is clean. He was throwing <laughs> balls on a laser, that kid. Yeah. He was... I mean, him and C.J. Stroud right now are the youngest, and I mean, they're, they're, they're killing it. I was like, is Devontae Adams like, fuck, I should have stayed? Because uh, that's why he took off, because he was like, I want to make sure I have a good quarterback and yada, yada, yats. I think, I mean, I'm rooting for Detroit, man. I am rooting for Detroit, though. I do want them to get, 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 their, get their ship. Um, and even though I have one friend, uh, one dear friend, shout out to Dougie, Doug Bass in, uh, in D.C., that's a, that's a Ravens fan. And he, he, I, I didn't even answer his call. But, you know, <laughs> I would like to see the Ravens get it or Texans get it. Um, anybody but, but the Chiefs and the Niners, I'm okay with. You can roll it. I mean, I don't even give a fuck. But but e even then, like, you know, uh, I'm not going to be talking shit. How do you talk shit if your team got eliminated in the first round? How do you talk shit if you didn't even make the playoffs? All my giant family and friends. <laughs> and you keep bringing up, well, we won with Eli. Who the fuck cares? <laughs> After That's the other question. After how many years does can you not bring up a Super Bowl? Ten? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a long time. Ten years if you can't bring up a Super Bowl, I would say five. I think five's a good. I, I think, think five, 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 five right? Five is definitely yeah. a so good there one. you go, Eagles. <laughs> I mean, you talk about utter implosion. Mm -hmm. Especially how much as much turnover you have now in the NFL. It's ridiculous. Like they're, you could win a Super Bowl and then that team is completely gone within three years. You know, coach and all. Speaking of, we're talking about that too. Coaches are really under the microscope and getting fucking fired left and right. There's so many job openings right now and so many legendary coaches without a job. That's fucking insane. I didn't even know the Tomlinson you said was a uh, Yeah, he's away. out. I think he's out. Uh, Isn't he out? He got did you look it up? I looked it up and it said that he 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 wants to coach a team in two thousand and twenty twenty four, but I didn't see anything like they they're That he got ways, fired? Or that he got fired. Yeah. I mean, this is the NFL you're in. You know what I mean? I mean as much as I don't like the Eagles, um, you know, uh, what's his name? Seriano, however, you, what's his name? Uh, Seriani, I think, I don't know. Uh, you know, guy goes to the playoffs his first year, goes to the Super Bowl his second year, makes the playoffs his third year, and he's on the hot seat. Yeah. McCarthy goes 12 and 5, three years in a row, wins the NFC East twice. He's on the hot seat. You know, and this is the league we're in. And I'll be honest with you, as an older, older, Football fan, this is the game is just not the same anymore, man. It's just not. And yeah. you know, and a great example of that is, you know, Tom Landry went 0 11 and won his his first year. He didn't make the playoffs or Super Bowl until like six years later. Uh, Chuck Knoll had a fir his first year was a losing. Like these guys, Jimmy Johnson would have been probably fired in today's game. I mean, how do you build a team? How do you? What do you expect? <clears throat> I mean, and especially when uh, like you know, free agents and. Here and there, and leaving and coming back, and you know, you know, you can't really have a team unless it's uh mostly your, your big guys are taking team friendly deals. I mean, that's pretty much why the Patriots stuck around for so long because uh, Tom kept taking team friendly. Well, deals. that's the thing too. Tom Brady was a you know he, he's a smart guy. You're, you're, mm. you're looking at a goat that wasn't greedy. Yeah, you know what I mean. And he understood that 
you know, you, you got to keep the pieces to the puzzle, <laughs> you know, and they were always, they were always able to afford. That's the other thing with Belichick. Belichick didn't give a fuck. He cut you. Yeah. I mean, you know, he, he doesn't, he doesn't mess around, you know? So you, th uh, so what? So wait, no, you guys, you guys didn't fire your coach. He's still there. Right? Yeah. He's got Telecom. one more year. I mean, they're already, they're calling for his head. I'm, I, I give him another year. Yeah. I don't know, man. Uh, the, the, a lot of coaches out there, a lot of people, uh, interviewing and, um, I mean, I want AP, but I wouldn't be mad about Jim Harbaugh. I, it's either or. I don't really care. But Max Crosby's talking about cutting and getting traded if the if they don't hire AP. But so I don't know, man. So there's a term. <clears throat> this is the term I was looking for. What's that? It's a German term. It's called Schadenfreude. Schaden meaning damage or harm, and Freud or Freud. Maybe Schadenfreude is how you say it. Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude. Yeah, Schaden yeah. Schadenfreude. So this is people that take joy in other people's misfortune. Oh, shit. Right? So, you know, that's like when, when people root for people to fail. Yeah. They're usually fucking, you know, losers and people that aren't happy in life. But they... they uh, A lot of those people looking... At, that's that's that Joe Coy shit a lot of people I was talking about. They're just waiting in line to fucking hate on people. Yeah, because they're miserable and they're not they're, they're not doing anything. Now, the English word for it... A lot of shot and is is out there. Epicar... Casey, I think that's how you pronounce it. So, Shad and Fruity, <laughs> Hagen Das, <laughs> Frusian Glas, remember that one? Um, but it, it's it's an important social motion. It's uh, whatever that is. It's just people that take happiness in other people's misfortune. Now, if you're in a friend group, right, that's different. <laughs> you're in a right? shot, if you're in a friend group called Shad and Freuden, <laughs> then that's your But I'm saying, group. like, you know, friends bust balls out of love. Yeah. But like Stephen A. Smith, it's past the point of fucking, it's embarrassing. Uh, I did a whole. I don't really like this whole uh, 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 genre of people that like to troll. Yeah, it's like, dude, what the fuck? It's like, I just like fucking with people, and it's like, no, what the fuck? For what? I stopped actually like corresponding with people on Facebook and comments because it's like, it takes up your life, man. You know what? I was trying. So I was trying to find this thing out. Like, I think you should, should be allowed five comments uh, for every like twenty four hours. So you guys go back and forth, back and forth. And then if after your fifth comment, if you don't, if then you got to wait 24 hours. By that time, I feel like your argument, you're like, you know, it doesn't even matter. Why am I fucking even worried about this shit? Well, you know, uh, there, there are people, I, I, I don't get it. I never <laughs> comment. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I just don't understand the, the psychology behind writing a dissertation under something you have no part of. Now, yeah. again, there are like your little friend groups that you have, right? <laughs> uh huh. What are like what those are called friend groups? Yeah, yeah. We're we're talking friend groups still. All right. So like, if you're in an intimate group with your friends and you know, talking shit is fun. Me personally, I, I'm not going to spend time writing. I did it in the past when the internet first started. Yeah. Because I didn't understand the internet. Now yeah. it's just the internet being the internet. Yeah, you learn. And you know, and again, as a Cowboys fan, I do want to say kudos to people who make these memes because they're fucking funny. Oh, there's that, that the one. internet is undefeated <laughs> at sometimes. My buddy's sending me all this shit. I'm dying laughing. <laughs> I mean, because it is. It's it's fucking. Yeah. It's so pathetic. It's funny. These were, this will put a production in his shit. I was like, damn, this this guy was like singing and shit. Like for instance, there was a guy that made a comment, and uh, he does artwork or whatever. And I was, I looked at his page, and his shit looked like a fucking fifth grader did it. You know, mm -hmm. but he's out there commenting on other people's art. Like, first of all, artist to artist, I would never do that. Yeah, right? I don't care. Um, I don't. I don't want to deal with the notifications of everybody liking or arguing or, uh, you know, you're a certain special kind of person that something's off here's this, here's that this. you spend your time. Here's just a song that we were looking at. Boys inside, are y'all still them boys after tonight? Green Bay destroyed you, no champion. Now, here's the thing, okay? <laughs> if this guy's a Niner fan yeah. or whatever, okay. You're uh -huh. But if your team isn't on, why do you you take the time? Obviously, they're doing that for clickbait. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, unless mm -hmm. unless you're an Eagles fan or, you know, but even then. Or even a Packers fan. Even you mean, then, you yeah. lost. You, 
The Eagles self-destructed this year, lost the fucking NFC East, and were knocked out by the Bucks, which is nowhere near as good a team as, as the Packers. Yeah. And you're going to take time to make a video? You know what I don't like? Is, <laughs> I don't like when... That song's tremendous. <laughs> it is good. Hey, he hits all the notes too and everything. He's he like, killed it. <laughs> he's, got, he's got the wig on and the suit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the, uh, the thing I don't like too is like, I won't hear from this person or these people like you're talking about. You won't hear from all you've never even met or anything like that. And all of a sudden, there's these there now. There's comments on your shit, and it's like, dude, I don't even fucking know you. We never come for com- uh, you like for you to like start talking shit to me. I, I I we'd have to already be engaged in a shit talking controversy at right. first. But they're just like coming out of nowhere. I don't like that. I can't stand that. That pisses me off. Or even like when you post anything, there's there's been some people I had to unfollow or unfriend uh, from because like I would post something and. I would never get like, hey, good job or anything like that for anything cool. But if I post something and uh, all, they would just be negative all the time, constantly. It's like, well, I'm that, like I that's like the name of this episode, by the way, is Shrewd and Froggin. You got it. I got it. All right, whatever the fuck that is, Shrewd and Froggin. No, shout out to people that take pleasure in other people's <laughs> misfortune. I would put, I would post movie reviews sometimes, and it's just my opinion. And then, uh, like, and I, I understand if you po- uh, like put your opinion out there, you're gonna for, for criticisms. But there will be certain people that just never like would agree or they would always disagree and it's like what for like why are you you're just doing it just to be different and that's well, look again if, if you critique a movie that somebody liked it, it, criticism's fine yeah but it's like when it, it gets to the point where there's not it's when not it's criticism. just when they're when they're just saying hateful shit <clears throat> just to be on the opposite side of you constantly that's what i don't like too it's you know and it's, shit. it's funny too uh they're the feminists use that term mansplaining or whatever mm-hmm. i get it <laughs> I get it. I get like when you you post a clip and some jerk off in his basement is explaining your motive or what you did. And it's like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Guys do that a lot. Women do with the other version where they feel that they have to tell you how they feel. Does that make sense? Yeah. Men try to explain everything without be not even knowing the ins and outs. Mm-hmm. And women have to tell you why why I feel this way. And, you know, they, they just feel obligated to tell you. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, you ever have yeah. that? Yeah, the, uh, the 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 rhyme and reason. Yeah, well, like after a show, a woman was, saying, you know, look, I have to tell you, I'm not like, you know, it's like, okay, why, but, why do you feel the need to tell can me? Be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. I, I, you know, I don't fucking care. Or, yeah. or or a guy, oh, I see what you did there. You is that what you? No, that's not what I did. <laughs> yeah, you fucking jerk off. <laughs> that's why mm. you know again. I, and I do love, I, you know, I love getting my balls broke. Yeah. Like I just, the, and again, I'm, I'm not just saying, I think it be, it becomes a point of embarrassing. Like Stephen A. Smith. Mm. Okay. I love you. I do. I think he's great. But your, your hate for the Cowboys surpasses your love for the Eagles. The fact that I don't even know who your fucking team was. And I thought it was the Steelers. Mm. Like, and I, I get it. You're doing it for whatever. But, dude, take care of your own backyard. You know what I mean? Be that adamant about your team being better. Like, that's, that's how we are on our podcast. Yeah, be critical. We, we sit too. there and go, okay, this is what we're not doing. This is, <laughs> I'm not sitting there going, hey, fucking Eagles lost. I mean, it did help to sting a little of Dallas losing. <laughs> yeah. And I think the sting will go away if, if the Niners lose. And then now it's oh, like dude, that'd be the best. Packers, Detroit, or uh, 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 Packers and Bucks. Yeah. And then they, I'm pretty sure that they, I'm, they're going to try to make the Chiefs go. They're, that's too much viewership, I think, as well from that uh, from the whole Taylor Swift yeah, uh, effect. I, I think a lot of us are wanting that to end too. Ah, oh, dude, definitely. But you know, I I like Lamar Jackson. He's from Broward County. Oh, mm-hmm. oh I, yeah, Broward Palm Beach. Yeah, the, wherever Boynton Beach is, he's from South Florida. What is it again? This uh, what's the German word again? Frugenglagen. Or fruit. <laughs> I knew you were gonna forget. Uh, Freudian Schadenfreude. 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 Which is crazy, yeah, man. It's I. You know what? I'm I'm a big. Uh, like I said, like last week when we were talking about the Joe Coy thing. It's like my whole point was to talk about you know people hate and they're waiting to hate, and it just it's just it's frustrating because it makes you you know uh, uh, as a, as a comedian you know like whatever you do we all we have to know. That people are lying in wait for us to fail so they can all do what they just did with the cowboy type of thing or with your team type of thing. And that it it really pisses it pisses me off to the point. It ain't happened yet, but I'm already fucking well, getting, angry about that shit. Bringing it over to the comedy world. Mm-hmm. It's those comics that sit there and comment 
on other comedians' careers, dude, or or their material. That's a pet peeve of mine. Well, I mean, it's because it, it's a bitch trait. It is. It's a and, straight hoe trait. And uh, and then they go up and they're doing nothing groundbreaking. Yeah. I don't comment on anybody else's comedic career because why? Because it's a fucking hard thing to do. Well, it's it's hard. It, it's just even the point that yeah. Well, and, and don't don't be talking on no one else's money. But let's say let's say we're in the same thing. Now again, I've competed in athletics. There's shit talking on the field. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the game, you know, I don't dislike something so much that I take pleasure in uh like, you know, even Brock Purdy. I, I want to see the kid do well. Not against the Cowboys, but <laughs> you know, you, you have your biases and, and 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 your thing. But getting back to the comedy scene, mm -hmm. I again all the years I've been in there, I can't tell you. First of all, there's a lot of drama in comedy. <laughs> all right, tons. Yeah. And I can't tell you the amount of comedians that I saw in when I first started that were talking shit. Da 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 da. They've gone away. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I remember one kid one time. I I caught him. I walked in on him talking about my bit. Yeah. And I heard him talking about me. Mm -hmm. So I, I said, "What's going on?" And not not like in a in a confrontational way, more from a. Uh, you know, because you know me, I like to get into the verbal things too. <laughs> and he basically was saying, yeah, no, we, we were saying how your roller skating bit is great, but you use music and it's kind of cheating. And I go, what does that mean? I don't understand. So then he tried to explain it to me. And then, then I said, he goes, because you, you, you know, we're different comics. Then he was like talking about his writing. And then he brought up another bit that I did. And then he brought up another bit. And then I finally said to him, I said, listen, man, I couldn't tell you one of your jokes. Yeah. Right? Like, why are you... Yep. You're listing other comedians' bits. I, I could not tell you one of your bits. Right. I don't mean to be a dick, but I don't... I don't know them. Yeah. I don't care. Why I, are you I, watching my game? Yeah. <clears throat> like, it's it's weird to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are people that operate that way. Exactly. And it fucking... Your mom's awesome. like that, yeah, man, she, when she critiques other drug dealers. She's like, she's like, hey, how they, well, how, how much they stepping look, on their shit? Look. <laughs> and how much, uh, <laughs> how much baby powder? And they can't weigh it out like I can. Mm -hmm. My mom could eyeball it, bro, from like... No, it's like all these people that take pleasure when these celebrities fail or... And you know, listen, some of them bring it upon themselves. But like a great example to me is... Of of Frugen Scrugen. <laughs> and you know, and and nobody takes this into account, right? Justin Bieber. Mm -hmm. Here you had a young kid that was really talented that was eaten up by the industry. So he has this little kid doing pop music, which was a formula. They did it with Michael Jackson, they did it with the uh, you know, those little kid groups. Yeah. Making millions of dollars off of this kid. But then all of like Hollywood that's anti-bullying, when he's a little child. Mm -hmm. their late night talk show host doing jokes about him, hating on him. Yeah. Right. There was this thing, which was kind of funny, I guess, where like they were doing Justin Bieber had this thing where he could perform next and somebody hacked in and they made him in Beirut or something like, you know, like where there was a war, <laughs> you know, you had all of these adults hating on this child waiting for him. Oh, he's going to be a, a, a mess. And you know, it's a little kid. Yeah. And nobody realizes that. Cause they're like, Oh, he's just famous. Who cares? He was a talent, and he's still talented. The guy could play music, music, uh, drums, the, all different plays, instruments. Yeah, he's, he got his own shit going. He was a real talent. He's still a real talent. Now I know it's odd that I'm sticking up for Justin Bieber, but it's something that I noticed when he was a kid. I remember watching all these jokes, going, "This is a fucking child." <laughs> he's but, 14. He's 15 years old. He was younger than that, I think. Yeah. Right? He was like 12 or some shit. How old was Justin Bieber when when he started? When he popped, I can look it up. I remember being in that like. Sheesh, I was in like fourth grade when he was like popping off. Yeah. And it was all these fucking dudes and people online that were hating on him because he was making money. And the other crazy thing, which nobody talks about, you have grown women screaming when he walked by, ripping at his clothes. Mm -hmm. How is that acceptable? <laughs> How is it acceptable for women to go nuts and a, and, and a male celebrity and they're gr grabbing him and groping him and trying to take his shirt and stuff like that? Yeah, he was, uh, he was born in 94. And he popped off in 2008. So that's about 12, right? 12, wow. Yeah. He's just a child. 
You people should be ashamed of this. <laughs> Just hate doing your Freudian shrugging. Yeah, you frugin' shrugin' ass bitches. <laughs> oh, puss ass. Oh, puss ass. <laughs> fuck ass. Frugin' grugins. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, I, 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 that just, that just perturbs me, man. Because there are definitely people to wait and hate. And I've, and I've, you know, I've been in car rides with comics too, man. Where that's all they do and that's all they talk about. And I remember, I don't know, were we talking about the last, last time about how like some, they were like, yeah, if they're, if. If they're talking shit about other people, don't think they're not talking shit about you when you walk away. Oh, of course. I gotten I gotten actually uh I so I was in this car ride with these comedians and I was in the back seat and I had already had a conversation with another comic and I said, I don't want to be participating in it. I go, because you know, I was just coming back to stand up and I go, I would be crushed if I would hear a whole group of car of comics talking shit about me and my set. Like, and I'm just coming back about but two would years you? in. Would I would have. Yes, man, definitely. I'm, back I'm, then, not now. I'm still now. Like, really? I, yeah, fuck yeah, dude. I'm, well, then dude, I got something to tell you. Listen, comedians are, because it's like this, man. Comedians are the most sensitive people in the world. That's why we, dude, we are, we are so sensitive. I was telling someone about this. We like serial killers, right? Because... It's a thing, motherfucker. You, you're, you're, you listen to this. You watch them. No, don't you? Don't you? Don't you find that fascinating about how someone doesn't have any emotion and they could do something that fucking crazy um, to somebody I, I'll else? I'll be honest with you, man. I, no, no, nah, man. No, oh, you're fucking weirdo. Then, yeah. anyways. So I, I, do. I don't. I don't either. You don't either. You you don't watch a serial killer and be like, what the fuck is cr this? Is no. crazy? I could not fathom the idea. Although I'm I did not watch to... a documentary on psychopaths. Yeah. It's it's crazy. Uh, I'm not trying to gaslight you or anything, but I mean, you're the only one in this room right now that. Uh, What's gaslight mean? Gaslight me. Uh, that's like like you know make you think you're crazy. You know. No, no, no. There's yeah. a, a there's a huge serial killer following. Yeah, absolutely. And and what's crazy is w women are the number one listeners to crime podcasts. Yeah, uh, well, because because this is this is why because uh, I I would like to think this, um, they have something that we don't have. They have they they cannot have any emotion at all. But we have so much emotion that we have to go and tell strangers about our inner thoughts and th and ideas and our insecurities. And the reason why they're funny is be, because it's like people are like, oh yeah, I have that too. I I think like that too. That's funny. I never thought of it that way. So. You know, I'm definitely sensitive in a point where it's like, yeah, I, I care what people think. Um, I, you know, I, I get what you're saying. I'm not gonna. Just, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't let myself lose any sleep over it, but it does bother me. Um, the thing, I, I'm. I was more on the shit talking. That's that's what I'm stuck. Oh on. yeah, no, I'm talking about directly talking about you. That's to me, honestly. When you're younger, you probably care more. It's like when mm -hmm. I was a little kid, man. Before I had my first fight, which was like seven fist fight you know mm -hmm. you're always afraid to get punched in the face until you get punched in the face <laughs> yeah then you're like this thing fucking nothing you yeah know? and then you know then you get even more and more beatings you just you know you're used to it to to a point to where like it don't phase you you know um it's the same thing with with this to we me, just hate we just hate directed towards you constantly. yeah I, I i honestly man it it came with age. I mean, I don't know at what age. I, I know I was definitely in my 30s when I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> but I, I don't... That stuff... Like, I mean, I will say this, though. I do care. I don't care if I piss an audience off. I, do, I care if they leave feeling sad. I don't want nobody yeah. leaving a show feeling awful. Yeah. Or, or hurt. I'm, I'm not... Because you know me. I'm not a mean guy when it comes to that type of stuff. No. Because I bite my tongue a lot. <laughs> but, you know, like I made a woman cry in the front row in wisconsin this weekend oh really well she was 48 she was drunk and he she, said well she had it coming well <laughs> i felt bad about it because i didn't i wasn't really hard in the paint she was just mm -hmm. drunk and emotional and it was her birthday oh. and she kept announcing it was her birthday and then she she was sitting in the front and she kept talking and talking and talking to the point to where i said okay and i just called her out a little bit on it pulled back she was drunk and embarrassed a little but then you know Cause I did this, you know, some, some basic crowd work, but nothing directed at her. Mm -hmm. Then I felt bad. I, I gave her a hug. I was like, don't, don't feel sad. You know, yeah. I don't want that. Yeah. Like now if she was pissed and went, that guy's a fucking asshole. Then I'd be like, well, you're an asshole for talking. But because I heard her feelings, cause she was drunk and being emotional. Then I'm like, oh, I don't. so that's where I'm <laughs> yeah. sensitive. Yeah. You know, I, I don't like that. I don't like people feeling I've, I've taken that to bed with me yeah. where like some, even if somebody was being really rude. Mm -hmm. And I got and I bested him. I don't walk away feeling good about that. Like, uh, I'll give you another example. I'm at the gym the other day, and I'm making a right, and there was somebody in their car making a left. There was a parking space pulling out, so I think this guy thought I was going to take it, but I'm already making a right and the right away. So he makes a left, and to where I have to move and hit the curb, mm -hmm. right? So now I parked the car because I'm going in, and and. 
you know, I, I walk over to, and he gets out of the car because I'm like, yo, what the fuck were you doing? You know what I mean? What? Mm-hmm. And he was, he was little and scared. Mm-hmm. Right. And I, and then I felt bad and I was like, uh, you know, I, I didn't mean to blow the horn, but he like ran in <laughs> and I felt bad about that. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So that's where I'm sensitive. No, nah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just like, I just, a whole carload of comics that like, I thought were my friends would be talking shit about me. That'd be, that suck, man. So I didn't want to be that guy. And I told this kid that I go, <clears> I go. And so they were shitting on all these comics on the drive back. And, uh, and then the comic that was, that I told this to, he looks up at me and he goes, uh, he says, don't you think so? Like trying to get me to talk shit too. And I go, ah, man, I don't, I'm listening to it because I have headphones in too. I was like, I'm just chilling, man. I'm tired. And he goes like, Carlos doesn't want to talk shit about comics because he thinks he's better than us. And then it went all in the car and they were like, well, no, no, that's what, this is what we do. This is what comics do. Da, da, da. And You'd be I was like, no, like, no, no, they no. don't. No, no. Yeah. I go, no. Uh, were they headliners? Uh, no, no. Okay. No, no, none of them. And then I was like, yo, and you know what? Everyone in that car doesn't do stand up anymore. I'm the only one that does stand up. That's, that's my point. Yeah, man. yeah. And it's, you know, you, the Frusion Glage and shit too, man. <laughs> this is the other thing I've never wrapped my head around. You, you vote for somebody for president. They don't win. Why are you hoping that the, the guy that you didn't vote for fails? Uh, yeah. I mean, what part of not seeing the big picture are you lacking? He fails. We all fuck up. Yeah. And, and that's the same thing. You get these people that take pleasure. Now, I get pleasure in seeing corrupt people get caught. You know, what but did I hear that saying? I, I don't see pleasure in, you know, uh, going after certain people because you just don't like them. I mean, what the fuck? I, I heard this say, I can't remember where I heard it from, but they were like, yeah, they go, you'd rather live in shit than let someone see you push a shovel, you know, kind of like you, 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 you know, let's, let's all try to help this out, but you'd rather just fucking sit there and, and hope that it's still shitty and terrible. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what a lot of these people do now. One of my favorite quotes is, it's none of my business what you think about me. Mm. And I, I say that all the time. That's a big AA And the thing. other thing is that a lot of comics have to realize is that once you put something out there, that's your gift to everybody. They can do what they want with it. Yeah. And I think we talked about that before. Mm-hmm. So if you don't like it, then don't, you know, I don't, how do I say this, man? I, my reputation matters more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, then somebody thinking I'm a hack or I, I don't, I don't get yeah. comedy. I like being respected. You want to be respected well, in, in the, in the comedy. I don't, yeah. again, it's the shit talking. I'm mm-hmm. not good. I don't want to be accused of taking jokes from people that know me and that I've never taken. I don't want to be accused of taking jokes from mm-hmm. myself, <clears throat> which that's happened. Uh, I don't want people to go, Oh, Brett Ernst is, is a dick. He doesn't tip the staff and uh, you know, starting that type of shit. You know yeah. what I mean? All of that stuff matters. My character matters to me. I, and yeah. I know it sounds uh, s- stupid. More than if somebody doesn't like my material. It's I could true. give a rat's ass. No, that's that's definitely true. Like, I don't want people to, you know, have a negative thing to say about me. I was working with a, with a comedian. No, your character. Uh, yeah, your character talking shit. Either or, yeah, right? We're talking shit about you and your character. Well, I mean, like, if somebody had a negative stuff. If somebody said, like, this joke is hacky. Okay? I, I don't, don't care. care about that. Yeah. yeah no. But I'm saying, if, but if they're, if they're saying, like... This person's a dick, and Brett does this, and yeah. Brett does that, or he's an asshole. Or you as a person. Me as a person, then it's like, okay, I'll give you another good example. Because character, usually, one of my, another favorite quote, the truth is like a lion, just set it free, and it eventually it defends itself. Mm-hmm. There's a, a, a very well-respected, well-loved comic as a person. And um, I don't know if I told him this story, but uh, I think he knows. Uh, Steve Simone. Mm. Now, Steve Simone, everybody loves Steve, not only as a storyteller, um, uh, but just as a person. So we were at the parking lot at the comedy store one time, and it was me, Kevin Christie, Freddie Lockhart. There was a couple comics there. And this dude came out, and we were talking about Steve Simone. Like, and I'm not just saying it, how great he is, how, how this kid can just stay in the pocket and doesn't curse and, you know, he's just, and his goal, what he does with his materials, he, he wants to spread love and just be positive, right? You yeah. know him. Yeah, I know he's great. So this kid's in the back and we brought him up and he's like, oh, that guy's an asshole. <laughs> and we all go, who? And he's like, it's that Steve Simone guy. And we're all like, what the fuck are you talking about? Now, none of us knew this guy really. We knew him, but we all know Steve. Mm. And then I remember Kevin Christie going, well, what did you do? Like- it got to the point to where we were 
like this kid, you're full of shit. And he told this story and we're like, there's no fucking way. Yeah. So Steve got done. He was, you know, walking around. He comes out in the parking lot and I go, Steve, come here. This guy? Because now, now you're talking shit about my best friend. He's right here. Mm -hmm. And he goes, no, oh, no, no, no. And he wasn't backtracking. He mm -hmm. had him, the name confused with another Steve. With another Steve. But that's how solid. He meant Renazizi. No, no, no. no just But around. I'm saying that's how solid Simone's reputation was as a comic and as a person. I got lucky, man, with uh, hanging out with those two. Uh, I, we, uh, I, I met them at the same spot I met you at. Uh, or not at met the you, but the theater? second. No, no, not the movie theater. <laughs> uh, no, because yeah, we met the movie theater, the, uh, the, the Calusa Casino. The adult bookstore? <laughs> the fucking, the, the Pee Wee Herman Theater? Um, no, the uh, uh, at the Calusa Casino, uh, what you call it, I, I got a chance. And then, because um, Simone was featuring, and then Rin Azizi was headlining and shit like that. And those guys were cool as fuck to hang out with. They were fun. No, they're, I mean, they're great people. And, you know, that's the other thing, too. Uh, the the humanity. I mean, I don't know how we got here from the Cowboys losing. <laughs> <laughs> Which, but, you know, but everybody's human. Everybody's hurting. Everybody's happy. Everybody is trying to do something with themselves. Everybody loves people. They're, you know, it, it's almost like the humanity has gone. And, and these Farfanugan people, <laughs> you know, they, I don't know what they think. And I have friends that are like this, man. Actually, a very good friend of mine who's a good guy. He's always hating on shit. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I, I said. It's going to gonna get said, you cancer, buddy. I said, what do you, <laughs> you know, he's always happy when somebody does something. And I'm like, and I said to him, I go, dude, what, why the fuck are you like that? And he goes, because I'm a miserable prick and my life it sucks. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> There are people. I, were we talking about this last week, or we're talking, or, or who's like? I can't remember if it was there. Like, there are some comedians that want other comedians to do so bad they'll get on the phone and ask, you know, hey, how do you do tonight? You know, and that was who was uh, that? There was a comedian Xavier, I think, was here, and that's what he was talking about, saying okay. that he performed somewhere and some comic called to check to see if he did well. Yeah, and there there are people like that, and I was talking to. Um, so Gene Moore was uh, featuring for me this week at the at Laughlin, and uh, he said the nicest thing. He said, "He goes, uh, I'm so glad I'm working with you." He goes like, he goes, "Dude, I, everyone has the nicest things to say about you," and I'm like, "Dude, that's awesome because that's all I really care about. That's that's actually what I really want. I don't want no one talking shit about me in a car ride. I just want good things to say. Everyone says good things about you when I talk about you or I bring you up. I'm like, oh yeah, da da da. Like, uh, earn stand up dude. He's a good dude. Uh, only thing is, he likes to fucking uh, get wild and shit. <laughs> nah, you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. Um, and that was another thing too. Uh, you're talking about how like you don't want uh, people to start rumors. I remember one time I, uh, I, I did that. I did that the joke. The radio shit. Yeah, I did that joke. That pissed me off a little. <laughs> I, I thought it was balls at you and Tinkle. But... Oh, me and Tinkle. I have it still. I, have, I should, we should throw yeah, it up. Yeah, but like did you see how they were quick? They were hella quick to jump on it. And we were talking. We were just making a joke. That's how stuff starts, man. Dude, uh, but it was, a, it was a little radio station in, in, up in fucking Washington, fucking Richland or something like that. It was hella funny, man. I was. They were asking me, they're like, "Who's the worst headliner you ever worked with?" And I was like, "Oh man, this guy Ernst fucking doesn't let well, you." Well, DJ drink. was with you too, right? Or no, was no, it was just it was me and Tinkle. And you both went in on me. <laughs> I, I they're said, like, "We never heard of him." Like, started hating already. <laughs> yeah, dude, Tinkle didn't. Tinkle didn't know. He just followed suit because I, I just. Well, I saw his face. <laughs> yeah, he, he was like, <laughs> he looked. <laughs> I we should put up the video one day just to fuck around. But Dude, that I mean that was funny, man. That was funny. <laughs> In hindsight, it's funny. But yeah, Ernst is like, what are you doing? And I go, I'm just fucking around. Anyway, they're gonna hear it. There's like they got five listeners over there. I was doing uh <laughs> <laughs> It was Jokers in Richland. Did you ever, did you ever do Jokers? That's a shit. Is that Washington? Yeah, it was Yeah, Washington. I did that in a bowling alley or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, it's there's a great uh I'll tell you a story off air. <laughs> But uh, one one of the comics that we're friends with uh, was caught clipping a girl in the green room. Oh, really? And they, because I remember, um, uh, they there was a no nobody back there policy after that. Oh shit! Okay. And when I tell you who it is, it's fucking great. I'll text it to you so you yeah. can laugh. It's a trip because it's like it's at the bowling alley, but it's not in the bowling alley. It has its own big ass room, and that room is fucking huge. Uh, but that was that was a fun gig. Uh, me and me and uh, uh, Tinkle went up there and shit like that. So wait, I, I was gonna ask you this. <laughs> I'm texting you right now. Okay. Um, I'll I'll put you on it too, Chase, so you can laugh. All what right, do work. you consider yourself like? What kind of comic do you get like in in regional wise? Because it's like you started in the East Coast, but did, and you but you spent more time in L.A. Right? Would you consider yourself an L.A. comic or? Um, what? Yeah, check to see who it is. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny no shot uh, oh yeah dude and, and, by the way the kid's a notorious fucking at, it was a notorious clipper 
Yeah, I believe it. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Let me call him and ask him if I can bring it <laughs> Um yeah. uh, say that again, buddy. I remember the uh well I was asking the question about the uh the comic. What kind of comic did you do you do you like think of yourself as like an LA comic or a uh, LA. Easter comic? Yeah. LA. LA comic. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh I started in Miami, which, you know, I, I and then I went to New York for a little bit and then I moved out to uh to um LA, but you know, I'm a store guy, man. Mm-hmm. I, I I wear it proudly. It's a badge of honor. I put my everything into that place and um you know and was so fortunate to be uh, uh what was the word a ma- not a major part of that but to be a part of building the store back up and making it you know back where it was because you know there was a time when we were on the ropes and there was you know guys that just kept it going mm-hmm. they they brush over it in the documentary but that rogan era the reason why the store is what it is now is because of that dark ages, right? Because of the stories that Rogan was telling on his podcast and uncle Joey and that era, Mm. um, you know, and there was, we were so close as at at the store because it was pretty much us against Hollywood at that time. Nobody came (laughs) that OR and the the shenanigans that went on and the camaraderie from, you know, Sean Pulowski having those 4th of July parties with the staff and all the comics would go to, uh, you know, down in La Jolla with, um, you know, that the staff down there, we all became close. They would come up. It was just this whole thing. And we knew at the time, cause nobody came to the store at the time. And Mitzi was like, you know, the godmother of comedy. And, uh, it was just, it was such a great period of time. Mm. And, uh, that's what, I, that's where I hold that as, but you know, I, 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 I get love in New York and I had the edge cause I grew up there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm I'm definitely an LA comic. Yeah, okay. I was wondering. I re- I rep the eight one eight. Yes, <laughs> Brody Stevens. And Brody Stevens. Eight one eight till I die. I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, it it was it was in it was an interesting time. But getting back to the haters, mm-hmm. I mean, which is kind of a corny term, but yeah, you you see people just so excited when somebody gets in trouble that they know or like like with the joe coy thing like that type of stuff yeah oh he bumped because they didn't get it and it's crazy to me that like the whole thing of uh, if you're a comedian talking on other comedians you know career and it's like why would you do that man like that's not like you said it's like it's a hoe trait and i I and again i'll i'll double down on this uh i have yet i have yet to meet anybody that is super successful in stand up mm. that watches and comments on other comics religious i've yet to see it yeah cuz it just blows my brain it's like uh, uh it's it's like you we always say you know comedy subjective or art is subjective or whatnot but it's like if you do it then you shouldn't be commenting on other people's art because you know how hard it is to create art mm-hmm. so what would you why would you do that and i always like i can't i can't remember who said it they were like i think it was jay moore which is he just said something that i really liked about i think it was jay moore talking about little uh, fucking tiny tim he's respecting someone that takes the extra 10 steps to get behind the microphone and do it you know and continue to keep doing well, i mean it. there's that level of respect to those people that attempt it or any type of art. And then there's the, the level of, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say respect to attempt it. Uh, the respect to, to stick with it. Kim doing it. Yeah. Keep going and then up the there. admiration of people that become successful. Uh, again, it's the podcast, but mm-hmm. not name dropping, but Gerard Carmichael is again, was a, still a dear friend. And he, he, we were talking one night and it was about this. And the one thing he said, which a lot of comedians don't realize is that the comedy table's infinite. There's not a limited number of seats, right? And in fact, the more there's good comics and just like now we're in another boom, Mm -hmm. the more there is, the better it is for everybody. If you want to think in those terms. But if you're bringing something good and unique, there's always a seat at the table. Just because somebody's sitting at the table doesn't mean they took your seat. They'll move over and make a seat for you when you, when you do something and bring something there. So all of those people that calculate, and again, it all comes out eventually. Like I said, the truth, the lion, it defends itself. The cream rises to the top. You've heard this mm-hmm. over and over and over again. 
And the other thing people don't realize, it's not how well you're doing, it's how long you're doing well. And if you can carve out a career and make a good living for yourself or just a living in general yeah, and do what you love to do, and it's okay to shit. Again, I'm not mad about people not liking my material. I, I really don't care. I know where it comes from. I know the honesty behind it. I do embellish a little, but it's always based in truth. I'm never going to tell the full story. One, I don't want to incriminate anybody. Mm. Like like what I just texted you now. Yeah. Okay. There's a funny story that I witnessed or, you know, was yeah. there for. I'm not, I'll change it around even though it's based in truth and not use the real people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or, you know, put a bow tie on it, but it's not, it's not my place to do that. It's my place to take something real and make it funny and palatable to an audience. I know where it comes from. I know that's the other thing. I hate when people judge intent mm. like that letter you got. Oh yeah. The letter. I mean, you should read that because this <laughs> is the shit comics had to start to deal with. And this was right in the beginning of the woke movement. Yeah, and uh, these this is a legitimate thing where where bookers or people that book colleges would send you these types of letters. I, that's why I, I honestly never did it. I didn't even attempt it. Yeah, I tried to get. I into went to college. one, saw where it was going, and was like, no. It was just yeah, I because everyone was like, you got to get an NACA, you got an NACA because. Because uh, Hassan was, uh, we started, I think Hassan maybe a year before me, and we're in the same area, and he got into NACA, and he was like, dude, you got to get into NACA, you got to, you know. Is it that the kid that just got in trouble, too, with the stories? Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, they were trying to now say again, he embellished, but it's All right, like, hey, I to... mean, if he made it up, whatever, but people were happy to see him fall. Yeah. That's far for new They're waiting for it. At its best. And it's, and then it's so, it's so, like, so minor, too. It's like, that's the thing, too. It's like, how, how... How low are they going to uh, put that bar so they could start the hating, which is ridiculous, which is crazy to me. But yeah, they sent me this. I, I did the thing and it goes, uh, it says, I didn't want to say anything negative about your material because there is nothing actually wrong. This with is it. the letter. This is the letter. Yeah. Because uh, there's actually nothing wrong with it. Uh, but I, but it didn't fit what we're looking for. Some adjectives I say that describe the material we're seeking is unique, cutting edge, academic, bizarre, progressive. Uh, we also look for big, memorable performers. There's a lot of good to take from this, though. You weren't dirty, creepy, or triggering. The AV, the audio and visual quality of your tape was great, which is something a lot of people failed to correct. And we did find you extremely funny. I personally enjoyed a lot of your material, but sorry, we it's not what we're looking for. Okay, see now the the, the key terms there. The rejection's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I've got tons of rejection. That's ninety five percent of our business. Yeah. It's none of your stuff was triggering. What the fuck does that mean? So if you're telling a, a personal story about your life uh, and the shit you went through, right? Because mm. you, you, I mean, I, I'm not putting your business out there, but you didn't have an easy fucking upbringing. No. And whatever that story is, if so, who the fuck are they to say it's triggering? Yeah. Not only that, you're in a room full of fucking adults that are supposed to experience different opinions, different life. So if if my truth is triggering to you, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah. And 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 again, this is the type of shit that it's going away. Thank God, because that was years ago, right? Yeah. This is 2018. So 17, 18. Again, yeah. these are people, and I, I can only imagine the person that wrote that. Yeah. I can only imagine the fucking douchebag tool that was letting you down in a nice way <laughs> yeah. that probably never fucking took a risk in their life. That's the other problem with a lot of these academic people. Mm -hmm. And you go to universities. I don't mean kids. And let's be honest. If you're 20 something years old, like, you know, you, um, you're supposed to be emo. You, you haven't experienced the real world yet. You're supposed to think idealistically. And then once life beats the shit out of you and kicks you in the balls, then you start to realize things. But that's somebody that's starting out pure. It's these 40-something-year-old professors that are like, they, they become these demigods on a campus because they control futures and, and they have a captive audience. Yeah. And, and they think they're interesting or they think that they're, they're, almost a lot of them are like dictators. And if you've been to colleges, you know what the fuck I'm talking about, mm. okay? Those people are insane. <laughs> if you're 45 years old and pushing fucking, a, you know, let the, just teach. Now, if this, if this is a, a person that is a young kid, okay, but I'm willing to bet it's somebody that's paid on the board like that Vice video did. 
Mm. Remember the Vice one when they were talking about the college, doing the college things? Yeah, like a board. And that person said, well, if we feel that they're not creating, they're, they're going against the environment that we're trying to create. Think about that. That's fucking insanity. And, you know, there's all different types of things in real life that will trigger you. Mm. Okay. People's experiences. I mean, and that's what comedy is. It's not meant to trigger. It's, it's, it's supposed to be somebody's life and events. I mean, really at what point does, does this even factor? Like if I go somewhere and I see somebody that I don't like, and again, I've had a rough upbringing in my, I don't, I can't even gauge my sensitivity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because of the, I guess, you know, the tough skin you develop in life. Who the fuck am I? To sit there and act like, well, that person said this, so therefore, that's triggering, and they shouldn't work here. Yeah, it's it's a it was a trip because it's like all they all it was telling me was like we're looking for a, a, a lovable weirdo to talk to our kids. For. But and if that's what you're looking for, fine. That's yeah. But to say triggering, mm-hmm. are, I mean, like the the requirements not, yeah. that they put in that is fucking absurd. Do you know the university or is it just NACA? Uh, I think it was just NACA. I, I mean so, that yeah. that that to me is saying okay. Here you have a uh, a Mexican American street kid that grew up in a rough area and had rough experiences, but you're not bizarre and progressive. We're looking for progress. Like what mm-hmm. the fuck? Yeah. The when I write after it, I, the what I write because I put it on Facebook years ago, and I was like, you know, because people always put up their their successes, and I was like, I, I put up everything because the whole thing about my standup and about what I do on stage and what I do in the private persona is my standup is all insecurity. It's all my insecurities. It's all my vulnerabilities because I I feel that that's true and that's real and that hits a chord with everybody, no matter what walk of life you are in. So you definitely everyone's had these feelings possibly before. So I put I go I'm not upset or anything. It's just shows showing people it's not always cool shows meeting great people and travel it's just this is just a peak of the other side of stand-up but what am i gonna do quit i like this too much to quit yeah but if that was even a deciding factor which it wasn't Mm -hmm. if that even enters your psyche yeah i mean then you know toughen up and the problem is the people that have that that you should toughen up they're in comedy now and they're they want it to change they don't want it they're that's switching gears now about (laughs) uh mindset i you know what i used to do when i was auditioning when i first got Cause I had my first network deal and then they send you on all these auditions and mm. I wasn't booking shit. Mm. So what I started doing was I was leaving. I, w- I kept all the scripts out to see how many it was until I got my first gig. And then I realized I'm looking at failure, <laughs> right? You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. why, why am I reminding myself <laughs> of that? Where what I started to do then was starting to just for me, mm-hmm. put up the things that I did well as a reminder Mm -hmm. but then it was like uh not out of um encouragement it just was more of how to gauge myself see how do i say this you could be right for the wrong reasons right so Mm -hmm. i'm not looking at those things going okay that's discouraging to me i was curious to see okay how how long is it going to take because i'm not stopping no yeah there's nothing to stop me um even in been you know going bankrupt twice uh you know having to go home you talk about farfanugan (laughs) all right so when my brother passed away i had to fly home and i had no money in my account i mean zero okay Mm -hmm. lost my job i was i was i had nothing and i had to fly back to florida and i was with my mom because you know it was a long period of time that they were in the hospital it was touch and go we didn't know how long it was going to take so I picked up a job because, you know, I was I was in the nightclub business. I ran nightclubs. I had a piece of a nightclub, <laughs> right? I had after hours. How you doing? So I picked up a job to, to just make extra money. And I remember standing at this place and there were people I knew that came in, right? Because I was still in my 20s. So a lot of my friends were still going out. And my close friends knew why I was there. I remember this one dude coming up to me. And going, oh, I thought you were doing co-. like he was so happy. Uh, yeah, this that that I that I had to come back, but he didn't know why I was there. He just thought I gave up. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I just remember him thinking, like, yeah, you, you know, like they, they were happy to see me there. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this farfanugan motherfucker. Welcome, <laughs> welcome back over here. Yeah, look, it was like these backhanded things. <laughs> look who it is. You know, oh world. look, oh, oh look, and he goes, well, you know, I'm working. You're working, now? you know, like that type of shit. It was just so. Toxic and negative with a smile. 
And and I just remember thinking, you know, God, man, these fucking people. But it, it wouldn't deter me. I just remember no. thinking how pathetic. Back how to, pathetic of them. And back to your point, too, about the scripts and stuff like that, which is, you know, uh, all you need them to say yes is once, you know. So well, like, here's how it works. Okay. Well, no, I just want to get, let me just say this really quick, though, about like. I lo- that's the that's the, the deterring factor that we have as as comedians or as like someone that's an artist and stuff like that. Like we know that they're gonna say no to us n- uh, nine out of ten times. But what we do is we still keep we got we got to keep doing it the ten well, time to get that yes. Here's how it works. I was talking about playing the odds. Yeah. Okay? yeah. So when you first move to L.A., the odds of you not making it, <clears throat> uh, just surviving and moving back <laughs> is astronomical. Mm-hmm. So the longer you're there, the more the odds start to play in your favor. <laughs> yeah. Right. So let's say. You first go on an audition, the odds of you getting it are astronomically not in your favor, okay? Mm. But let's say you've been on 200 and you've got 200 no's. Now the odds are more likely a yes is coming. Somewhere, yeah. Does that make sense? (laughs) Yeah. So what you're doing is you're outplaying the odds (laughs) and you have to sit through it and, you know, (laughs) just sit through all the failure. Now, the beautiful thing about what we do is we could maybe not get a gig here or ask to do a festival or get turned down for a special, but we're still getting the yeses in the clubs we're working. We're mm-hmm. still, we're still working and making a living doing what we love. Now that next level shit, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes, you, 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 you're preparing yourself for when it comes. Yeah. Which now, I, when it, when's it going to come is, you know, who knows is anybody's guess, but that's the thing though, too. It's man. I yeah, always play the odds. I never really, for me, it's just me personally. Like I was, I, I like, yeah, acting is cool. That's great. And all that shit. But I really like stand up. I've always wanted to be a comedian. Well, pick your lane. Yeah. And I love this and I love doing, I love talking shit. I love running around. Only thing I wish that I could have is a little bit no, more notoriety. So it's easier to get into some of these comedy clubs. That's all I care about. I said that in, in an interview. I said, I want to, when we were doing the Wild West tour, uh-huh. and they said, What are you hoping to get from this? I said, I'm hoping to get more notoriety so I can get more stage time. <laughs> it's like, and, and you know what? It's true. Mm-hmm. Pick your lane. Yeah. Right? And I tell people that because a lot of people get in a stand up with the intention of wanting to be more of a writer on a show or to be an actor or just to focus a stand up. All three of those options are great. Yeah. But pick one and stick with it. Yeah. Right. So and then what happens is when you're sticking with one, other shit starts to come up. But if you're focused on that one, it's why we had the pre-meeting today, mm-hmm. because, you know, I shot the special. All the other projects I had are now bow tied and ready to shop. Now I can focus more on the podcast and the pushing. Mm-hmm. But now I'm going to stick to this lane as long as I can with as, as much, uh, you know, stuff to uh, what's what I'm looking for. Um push behind it or whatever like uh, that's going to be more of a focus for me yeah but stand-up is now always there right i mean that's that's the first love it's the foundation yeah like like you're you're an amazing like i i and again man i you know i i'll take every opportunity to make fun of you i can (laughs) but here's a good compliment when you were filming me when i had to submit for some roles and the way you were reading the scripts and what you were seeing in in the sides Mm -hmm. i'm telling you right now that is not taught. You can't like the the way you're interpreting words on mm-hmm. the paper, because you have a writer's mind, right? Yeah, like a, yeah. But the stand up thing, is. that's that's what you're focusing on. But because you're you're fine tuning that, you're able to see that shit has just become second nature. Yeah. Does like that a, make sense? Yeah, it's like a little byproduct of, of well, because you 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 construct your stories and your callbacks, and you understand where things are going. You can read between the lines on what a, a what writer, emotion is yeah. Here, what, what, wait, wait, because the way he's saying <clears> that, wait a minute, and we made a couple adjustments, and mm-hmm. I missed it. I'm like, oh shit, you're right. Yeah, you know, because now I'm focused on the acting part, and mm-hmm. you were just kind of not co- coaching me a little, but yeah, I was you like, know, well, reading with me. He, I was like, he's stressing actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah. And then stuff like that, you know, that's what I mean. But as because you're focusing on the stand up, all these other things, mm-hmm. like you know, I'm I'm an option screenwriter. I didn't take a screenwriting class. Yeah. I I've sold shows. The reason why I was able to do that is because of all those scripts I was reading to audition. Because, you know, I'd never really yeah. read a Hollywood script until <laughs> I got to Hollywood. <laughs> and then you're reading all these scripts and you're like, oh, this, this, this. And then the fact that I was constructing stand-up every night, five nights a week, yeah. you know, 
uh, I was able to do that naturally anyways, fine tuning that skill. And then that skill was able to, yeah, you're uh, like, Oh shit, this it. exterior, this is interior. This yeah. Is I just fuck it. And you're then, like, oh, you know, yeah. well, I, I can write this. <laughs> yeah. And then I had an idea and I just sat down and, you know, I banged out like three or four of them and one of them took off. Yeah. But, um, you know, again, I, I'm busy enough and working and trying to get good and better at something I'm doing. I don't have time to wish hate, especially on my friends. Yeah. Joe Coy is a fucking great guy. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I, I ended up watching some of the set. I don't think it fell flat at all. Yeah. I think the audience was trash. Yeah. I watched it too. And I was like, this, he's just not bombing. I was like, he's just doing. I mean, I do wish he committed harder to it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like just did it more with like, fuck you. This is what <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and then people were commenting about the writers throwing his writers under the, but that's, that's, that, it's a joke. That's a joke. It's that's a joke the, David Letterman did that all the time. He'd make fun of his writers if something didn't land. Yeah. I was like, oh, these people don't get it. They don't get it. And I was like, uh, cause yeah, I finally got to see it too. And I was like, oh, this isn't that as bad as people were trying to say it was. And then you see other comics commenting. I mean, Ugh. like, uh, you know, I, I'll tell you right now, another great one, Steve Burns special, his new special, that, that talk show special that he did is fucking so original. It's one of the more original ones. Mm -hmm. Mike Young has one out that is brilliant. Um, I even told Mike, I don't even think you know how brilliant this is because he's doing his bits and then he does these sketches in between the bits mm -hmm. and it's telling a story. It's really, you got to watch it. I'll check it out. Ian, Ian Edwards did a Ian talk, like a TED talk in a stand-up format. Yeah. Which I thought was creative and unique. Mm -hmm. I like Neil Brennan's Three Mics. The I three thought mics that was good. fucking yeah. great. And then Steve Burns monologue for his talk show mm -hmm. that he was doing it was fucking brilliant you gotta check it and you're reading the comments and of course he know he don't even read them he's like me you, you do in the beginning when you first start you know when the yeah. internet was nobody reads them anymore mm -hmm. and uh some of the comments from comics that are like now here's the beautiful part about it <laughs> when the haters get hated on and then they get defensive Mm -hmm. And then, oh, then they have a fat then ass. They, then they play like a victim. Uh-huh. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's That to me is fucking amazing. Or it's all of a sudden, it's, it's now the focus is on them and it's like, Yeah, they well, start defending their shit because somebody that they're hating on goes on their page and says, oh, that da-da-da-da, make take that joke. Then they're like, well, what are you talking about? And then they start getting defensive and then they act as if that person's out of line even though they're hating on somebody because in their mind, they... They're not there yet, so that person should. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then they'll blame it on the like. Let's say, let's say it's like on Steve's comments. They'll blame it on Steve. Like, yeah, I was on Steve's page, and his fans are terrible because they all attacked me when I was just on there. Right. Yeah. Now, by the way, again, we all get negative comments. Yeah. Way, way. That's the other thing with comics. Way more positive, overwhelmingly amazing response. Mm. You just see those ones that I want to compel to go to to, def <laughs> to say, what the fuck are you talking about? Do yeah. you understand the brilliance in this? Now, again, if that's the other thing is that's why you shouldn't read the comments. You're gonna have a you're gonna have negative, and that's the problem with comics too. Mm -hmm. We'll focus on the one bad when surrounded by ninety nine good. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, it sucks because it's like. You know, you, you you spend your life working on this stuff and and in and trying to figure it out and get these jokes correct and you know just and, and just honing in, and then you're like, oh, I'm, I I you know I'd like to get the attaboy real quick, like that good good job, and then you go to look at the good job and then you just see a negative comment, you're like, fuck man, like that that sucks, man. I'm really trying and I'm I'm over here, you know, putting it out there and it just sucks, man. And sometimes it bothers me. It bothers me. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, but that, that'll, you, you need to let that go. Yeah, I would love to let it go. I, you I, know, Brody, rest his soul, he yeah. called me, he called a bunch of comics before he did what he did, and mm. we were talking about it. He was getting very upset about some of the negative comments that he was getting. Mm -hmm. Bro, that's Brody. That, that's his fixation OCD. Then I said to him, I said, all right, Let's, I go bro, cause he, he was asking me questions about, cause remember I was the first to do the YouTube special for free. Yeah. And then I think his was on Amazon or something. And then, then there were people commenting on it cause they didn't get it. And they, that's the other thing they're not supposed, those people you don't want at your show. <laughs> yeah. If that's... they're not seeing what the genius of what Brody was doing, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. They didn't get it. Like, why is he talking to the audience? Like, like they, it fucking went way over your head. Yeah. So um, I said to him, I said, well, let's, let's pick a band. And, uh, and he was like, I don't know. And then we, we, we went, we said Pink Floyd. Then we went to a Pink Floyd video. 
800 thumbs down. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> then we just went on a tear. Let's look up Zeppelin. Yeah. Let's look up uh, the Beatles. Beatles suck. Like, <laughs> they don't suck. How the fuck do you say the Beatles suck? Yeah. And and that type of shit, you know. It's just it's bound to happen. It's bound to happen. This sucks though. But yeah, no, it's. I mean, but that's the stuff you got to get over because yeah. it's the law of averages. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, like we, if if you like, I say on stage sometimes I only need one percent of people to like me. If I get one percent of America to like me, I'm good. Yeah. Right. And truth be told, you're gonna get way more than one percent, even if it's thirty percent. Mm. Right. And coming full circle to Mitzi. Mm. And. Mitzi told us a story. Uh, we were in the kitchen because um, Holtzman, she started putting Holtzman up later at night. And he, they used to have these buttons. I saw Brian Holtzman that after he got up at mm -hmm. the store. But she was saying when Kinnison worked the door, she said, uh, I'm not going to do her the, uh, the impression. The impression. Mm -hmm. when, when Sam worked the door. <laughs> so she said that she would put him on late at night. And what happened was is the audience at first didn't know what they were seeing, but then there was one table of people that got it. And the philosophy is those people that get that sense of humor probably have fucked up friends too. <laughs> so there's nothing better no. than somebody discovering a new artist yeah. and that's that loves what they do. They can't wait to tell their friends. Mm. So basically what she said was in the beginning, Sam was, you know, people that weren't understanding it, but then slowly but surely the audience took over yeah. all the people that wanted to see him and liked him. And then you couldn't get in the room and then all his fans found him. And then the, your audience will find you. And it's so much easier now with the internet. Yo, yeah. And you know, when you see younger people, any, any type of people that get discouraged, it's like, you know, uh, don't just keep, just keep putting it out there. Let the far for Nugans far for <laughs> Um, but anyways, we should be wrapping this up, right? Where are we at? We're, we're over an hour. Do you do you have this in opera? Like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I always uh, I always have to, to like tell my friends, you know, especially the younger ones, like you know, a lot of it's uh, the voices in your head, right? But like, uh, there's mm. there's like there's a lot of people who are not good singers who are working. Yeah, you know, the difference is that they just kept doing it. Mm, well, that's you know? that's the expression. Yeah. Hard, hard work trumps talent every day in the week. Uh -huh. There's a lot of talented people that aren't doing shit. Uh, yeah. Uh, right. And then, like, you know, the I made, like, a point, right, uh, when I was, like, first starting, like, singing and that kind of thing. Because, like, your voice doesn't mature for a while, you know. Mm. It's like, I'm just going to be, like, as, like, lovely to work with as possible while I get my shit together. Mm -hmm. And, like, I'm going to just tell the story real well and just do do the shit that I need to do. And so that people are like, yeah, I, I want to work with him again. Yeah. Because, you know, all the people that are just like, you know, talking shit about the other singers and they're like, oh, yeah, that that was well, a that that plays a big part in getting mm -hmm. hired. I mean, again, I'm, I'm willing to bet if you become a worldwide success, you're still going to be that way. You're not just doing that to yeah. get ahead. Um, but when I was I had a when we were casting a show on the the second the second deal I had. I was listing off actors that like comics that I know, actors that I know that I was like pitching for the show. Mm. And uh, one of the producers I was working with had been in Hollywood a while. And one of the things he said, that person's difficult, that person this. Oh, wow. And then basically what I learned was there are tens of millions of dollars invested in an episode, a hundred million in a season. Okay. They would rather have somebody that comes in mm -hmm. that can get the job done, but isn't going to be a liability than somebody who's super, super talented that could end up tanking everything with yeah. either ego or, you know, and the other thing that, that you'll notice, and it's part of the reason why K Cobra Kai is such a success there. When you get on a set and I've been on a bunch of sets without being specific, when you have a diva or a problem or there's it you feel it, it it's there's not that camaraderie that happiness mm. uh some people are like fuck let's just get it over with there no people that don't want to be there which i also found amazing mm. i mean you know when you're on a show for a while some people conveniently forget how that this may be it mm. how long it took for you to get it how many fail now you're here and you want to rush this motherfucker yeah I'm, I'm savoring every moment, you know? Um, 
but with Cobra Kai, from soup to nuts, top to bottom, everybody's cool as shit. No egos. We all have fun. We laugh. We hang out. The kids were great. Still are great. But I meant they were just kids. Yeah. Now they're getting older. I meant, you know, that makes all the difference of something that's going to be a success and, and a failure and anything that you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if people don't want to come to work or work with people, that's just, that's awful. Yeah. It did. Uh, uh, I'm supposed to be doing a, uh, a tour for the military and, you know, and a uh, person hit me up and they're like, yeah, um, can you think of anybody else you want to bring along? And I'm like, not who, who's the funniest. I was like, who could I hang out with in, yeah. in a plane? <laughs> Cause it's like for a, or a two week, like a military run. Cause, and I was like, that's, that's a big, big thing. Yeah. Who's going to be a good hang too? <laughs> well, Are to you... wrap this up, <laughs> first of all, what people need to realize, stop the farfanugan. <laughs> farfan. I, I mean, I know we were half joking about football and the Cowboys, but getting into the other thing. I mean, look, if you're an artist and you're out there, who cares what people think? I know it's hard to say. Just trying, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, if they if they want to judge your art, that's that's their business because you gave it to them. They could do what they want with it. When they start questioning your character or that type of stuff, you should always care about, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, my grandfather used to say there's two types of people: people with personality and people with character. Mm -hmm. Be careful of personality, he said, because they they placate. <laughs> People with character, they'll burn bridges as far as, you know, with opinions or who they are, but you know where you stand. Sam mm -hmm. Tripoli is a great example of that. <laughs> that kid's character is impeccable. Yeah. And I've been on two podcasts where his fans hated me, mm -hmm. but, you know, because he was on the, the conspiracies, oh, that's right. <laughs> which by the way, I will concede he was right about a lot of shit, <laughs> um, but his character is impeccable. Yeah. The guy is the most dependable person in the world. Now, you don't want to talk. I mean, I'm sure he has NFL conspiracy, you know. Yeah. That type of stuff, you can argue, but you know what a... And, and not to mention one of my favorite comedians, and I'm not just saying that. I've seen that. That kid took so, takes so many risks on stage. It's fucking insane. I, I consider him... I should well. I think he's like the Bill Hicks of of, of my generation in a sense. Mm -hmm. Even though Bill Hicks is kind of my generation, even though he's above me, but of my group, Sam goes in the hard in the paint no matter what. Yeah. But his character is impeccable. Then there's comedians that are liked by everybody, want to be liked, but they're little fucking. Some of them are devious little fucking little snakes. Yeah, it's funny because like we we're saying too about the people in the on that in that car, and I remember thinking like when I started, you know eliminating people like that from my circle uh it was like i just started realizing i was like those people are always going to be right where i lead them so i should just focus on that sometimes too a lot more and uh but you, back to your sam tripoli thing though that's so funny because he I, like i always hear you talk really well, highly of him and then we seen him at slow and we're in that movie theater where, where we had to do one of the sets and there was a uh, um uh, he he had the whole audience, and then that one lady was just talking and talking and talking, and then he just fucking annihilated. <laughs> he annihilated her so bad that she ended up turning and starting to like him after a while. Dude, but, what's funny about Sam is he's constantly in his head calming himself down. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's like, "I'm about love. I'm about love." It's like he's telling himself, "I'm I'm I'm enjoying everybody," but in his head, he's like, "I want to fucking rip work. everyone." <laughs> um, dude, he's a guy I've you know. So I was very fortunate, in, you know, in my friend group that I got into the store, it was like him, Sebastian, Maj Jabrani, John Caparulo, Aaron Cater, I met him. Like there, there was a whole group of us mm -hmm. and we would tour and do shows together. And like me, Sam, Sebastian and Cap would do shows together because Mitzi would send us down to La Jolla. Mm -hmm. um, me and him did a, did a show in Modesto one time. I didn't even know if we were getting out alive. That's hilarious, Modesto. Because he, Sam, I mean, when I tell you, <laughs> the whole fucking place he wanted to fight him and then sam's that fucking he's italian and armenian so he he's just that ain't he's like you know, yeah, he's, it's already firing. i said bro let's get paid and get the fuck out of here and he's like no fuck that <laughs> he talks from the throat too so it's very boisterous. <laughs> and but i mean he's again this ain't he's to me if you if a young comic wants to see what it takes to take risks I mean, to destroy, I've seen that kid. I don't, there's not many comics I've seen get standing ovations, mm -hmm. right? Not many. Legit ones too. Legit. Legit ones. I, pandering. I've seen that guy destroy rooms, get standing O's in every type of room possible. 
Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I've seen him piss the crowd off with that same material. And that's how you know. Dude, I've seen you get a fucking stand in uh, San Francisco, no less, which I didn't I didn't think that was going to happen. But that, was that the night the girl said I was slut shaming? And I said, don't call my wife a slut. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> and, and I'm like, what the fuck's that mean? <laughs> and she's like, no, that's I'm not calling her a slut. I said, watch, you remember? And I'm like, dude, that's fucking disrespectful. Is that? And then a DJ a, was like. Yeah, then it was. because That's a term. That's a term. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, about what? You want here's the here's the joke real quick. I was talking about how like I'm not good with knowing uh like if my girl slept with people. like I, I the joke was I don't want my girl to be a virgin. I just don't want her to have been with any dudes before me. <laughs> right? And then it was about how like if I go you ever meet somebody that your ex used to, you know, clip mm -hmm. and now, you know, you ever meet him that uncomfortability. Yeah. Where that introduction. Yeah, the introduction, the way she says his name. Yeah. Thinks I know, she's like, "Hey, Brett, this is Jeffrey." Yeah. And you're going through his your her dick Rolodex in your head. <laughs> like, then you're oh, like, "Oh, hey, this is fucking freshman nice, year." Yeah, nice <laughs> to meet you but in your head you're like i'm gonna fucking kill you your family her <laughs> so i was just getting to that bit and this girl yelled out that's that i again this is that woke shit yeah she was like you're slut shaming and i didn't know what that meant mm -hmm. that i'm like yo don't call my wife a slut <laughs> and then the audience laughed and then she was like no you're making you're, you care and i said first of all the bit's not about who she's had sex with. It's about my, my insecurity yeah, and my, my insanity. Yeah. <laughs> and who are you to fucking stop the show? Mm -hmm. But I think that's, that, that's, was, that's that was that night. Cause it was also too, I, in that, in that same set, I don't want to, if we can edit this out or not, but, um, you, uh, D you don't go, say it if we might have to edit it out. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. All right. Fuck it. But, uh, <laughs> I always say that because, like, I don't know what Ernst fucking does and doesn't like. What you call it? That like the same well, thing with I, the video. I protect material. Well, no, it's not the material. It was it, it was just a, a, the phone call. Do you remember remember that when you with, with the phone and then uh, what, what, oh with the the coffee pot? Yeah, it was a coffee pot, right? When I, when she's like, you fucking left the coffee <laughs> up the fucking. <laughs> When I said, "Hey guys, you want to know what it's like to be married?" <laughs> that was such a good one because it was. She started off so calm, and she was like, <laughs> Dude, so "I wish I still had the message." Dude, it was so funny. So what happened was I ran out of the house, but I left the burner on the coffee pot, so mm -hmm. it burnt, and then the, the glass broke, and then there was coffee everywhere. So she came home to that, <laughs> and, and the uh, voicemail just sounds so good. She's like, "Um, uh, bread. Um, when you <laughs> left." You, you, you left the fucking coffee pot on and now there's coffee and, so, and then at the very end it, it, it's a long pause she goes Ugh! yeah she was so frustrated and hung up the phone which I, I get like it it's, why I'm, that, it's why I'm divorced dude the fucking uh, the audience just fucking just died and just it was such a good show dude but that when I told the kids you wanna know what it's like to be married and then, that, then I played it for them Dude, the, that was the other thing. Ah, oh, never mind. We'll get we'll get into that another time. Yeah, yeah, no, that was. Uh, yeah, I remember that. My aunt, my aunt, my godmother talks about that too. She goes, "That killed me," because she just went, "Ah!" Oh! <laughs> just so frustrated. Oh, that was. So she goes, funny. "You forget everything." I'm still like that. I I walk if I'm leaving to go somewhere. I'm walking in and out of rooms like eight times. Mm-hmm. Because you're trying to figure out what you left. You left anything, or if you like keys, watch wallet, or closing doors. You know what's crazy open? too? I forced myself to be early. Like mm -hmm. I had a five thirty meeting with these guys today. Mm -hmm. So, but eat. I'm still tempted at five fifteen, and I, I'm like, instead of I, I can go grab something to eat. Real, you know, like I'm gonna put you're, the time constraint on me. You're nuts. <laughs> but getting back to the whole thing. Oh, okay. Uh, the hating, the Farfanugan, Gershon Goffin. Yeah, what is it actually? What, what, what do we say it again? Dude, uh, you get it. Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude. Um, you know, it's funny. I say this in my act at the end now. But, you know, life, we all know it's short. But it is short as fuck. I was 25 years old a month ago. <laughs> and I'm assuming I'm going to be 75 next month. Um you know, we're all just killing time in between meals until we have to punch out, you know? Every single one of us is sacrifice something for someone or something. And again, I'm not trying to be kumbaya here because I, I'll take criticism all day and, and the ball busting. Mm -hmm. It's the hating. These people that take all their energy to hate on things, they just, I, I, I do, and I'm not trying to be the bigger person. I feel bad for them. Mm -hmm. Like that kid that I was telling you about talking about the other comics. His, he is so focused on what everybody else is doing. He wasn't bettering himself. Yeah. You're wasting and, time. And, and even if you're coming from a constructive 
criticism place, even though he was backhanded complimenting me in a sense. It's like, dude, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Yeah. I remember when I played ball, like in college, some of the guys would look at the the size of the guys in front of them. What the fuck for? What do you what What do you care? Just go in blind, start swinging, and fuck <laughs> it, right? What What do you need that extra that extra heaviness on your head to now say, okay, I got to remember my assignments. I gotta I gotta remember to do this. Oh, and now I'm gonna look at how big the guy is in front of me. What the fuck's the, why, why are you adding that? It's not going to change. Yeah. So, you know, fuck it. Why even have that in your psyche? And it's the same thing. Don't waste your time because sometimes people are compelled to do it. I'm not telling you this because I, I think it's a bitch trait. I'm telling you this. It's, it's negative. It, it not even in the kumbaya sense. It's detrimental to your growth as an artist and a human being to spend time watching other people do what they love, hating on their success not being the best at what you can do. Mm. It's just a waste. And it's, and it's the, and again, if it, it's a common denominator in failure, I put that in my equation, accountability, yeah. right? Be yeah. accountable. Don't look in the, don't look in the past and don't waste your time hating on other people's success. It just, it's going to, it's going to kill you. And I don't want to say any names or anything like that, but like the biggest fucking <laughs> hater. <laughs> Is your bitch ass dad? He will sit there. <laughs> oh, I thought hours. you were going with Carol. Oh no! Yeah, your bitch ass dad <laughs> bitch hates ass dad everything. Loves to hate. He gets excited. He calls you up in the middle of the night. And you know, it's funny too. And again, speaking from a male perspective, I was watching something. You know, about people that like empowerment groups and men. We are so used to being alone that is that becomes our strength. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And when you're truly alone, when you're truly, co you, there's no lifelines, when you're totally dependent on yourself, all your decisions have consequences. If, if I don't get a gig, I don't pay the bills, there's nobody in my family that could send me money. It's just me. And it's been that way since I was a kid, yeah. right? I mean, you know what I mean. On, no. on the, when I mean early 18, 20s, that stuff. Been on my own since I was... I yeah, got out of the house. There's no inheritance coming. There's my nothing, way. <laughs> nothing. Everything is earned. Yeah. When you put yourself in that situation and you do, I know it goes the same thing for you as an opera singer. Mm -hmm. When you feel alone and you feel like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm all I got. That's when you kick into success mode. Yeah. And you definitely can't be sitting there looking at what other dudes have. Mm -hmm. Like, like your bitch ass dad. I'm fucking feeling no, sorry you can't, for himself. You can't be sitting there going, Oh, and not only that, if if you if you're gonna go one way, be indifferent. Okay. Just don't don't even hate, just be indifferent on it. I'm the other way where, you know, I'm scared to watch <laughs> some things that my friends have done because I I I, I don't wanna not like it. Yeah. So I'm just rooting for them. Mm -hmm. And it's not a force thing because again, I know we're switching gears. But I am. <laughs> sports that's why sports is important for people to play because when you play sports you especially team sports because individual sports there, there's different lessons to learn but in team sports you're usually competing with or against somebody you know or you're friends with on top of that you you get your ass kicked it's on you that's that's in all sports especially one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. you're responsible for where you're at in life how you train to where you want to be, how good you are, how well you know the plays, how prepared you are, all of that shit, that's on you. Nobody's going to give you fucking anything. And it's just that you're, you're, you're ruining your, your mental health and your well-being when you're taking time to sit there and critique and judge. This is for artists, not for fans. There's a reason why you guys are fans. There's a reason why you're in the audience. There's a reason why, you know... You're there commenting. I don't care about that. I'm talking about the the people that are in our circle, the people that know how much joke. Well, they don't see it, or but I saw how much he sacrificed. They want to be in the circle so bad too. But you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Like that's the other thing that I take personally. Mm -hmm. Like you know, I've seen Joe Coy when he wasn't Joe Coy. I've seen uh, Matt Rife when he wasn't Matt Rife and Sebastian when he wasn't Sebastian. I've seen Burr being frustrated at a point. I've seen it all. I know how hard they worked. I know how honest they are, how good they are as people, as human beings, how generous they are. 
And, you know, it does hurt me a little to see other people just fucking tear, just shit on it. Just tear, tear them on down. It. And, and not even for the sake of, criti- like, it's past the point of, well, this joke could, it's like the evil, hateful shit. Yeah. The, uh, you, you just mentioned too, like, uh, about watching friends stuff or, you know, just because you want to support them. I've done this, man. I've, I've bought friends, uh, uh, comedy specials, but I haven't watched them just cause I want like, uh, there's like Lance Woods, Paul Conyers, uh, tricks. I've, I bought, um, who else has I bought? In, uh, well, do you need to though? Like I, you've seen them perform a lot, though, right? No, but I, I want their, I want I just numbers. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, no, I meant, yeah, yeah, not not buy it, contribute, but I meant Contri- watch it. You yeah, probably know know what's in. There yeah, anyways. I've seen them work it out. Like yeah, yeah, I've yeah. seen this set already tons and tons of times. But it's like I definitely want I, I want them to succeed. I want everyone to succeed because. Like you said, man, like I do, I, if they succeed, I feel like I succeeded too. Well, I could be for you and not against me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, it, again, it makes no sense. It, it's not business. It's stupid business wise. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's oh, the Mikey other... Winfield's. That's another one I bought. That's yeah. You know, he's like, but again, yeah, we've seen them. Fucking yeah. We got to have Mikey in. We should bring yeah, him absolutely. in. Yeah. Um, I forgot what I was going to say now. Oh, oh, I've seen, this is the other thing comics don't realize too. Most of your gigs, everything you're going to get is going to be from other comics. So when you're back there, sly talking, um, talking out of both sides of your mouth, I've seen that shit too. I've seen dude <laughs> shitting on a dude, he gets off stage. Hey man, great ah. set, you know? <laughs> and you're like, look at this. Yes, yeah, yeah, I've been a witness of that. And it's you know, so and, and I ain't no, I'm not a, I'm not a snitch either. I'm not going to be like, yo, don't trust so-and-so. I just let that shit play out. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know what? The, the other thing, too, is I've learned this in life. We got to fucking wrap this up. But um, <laughs> yes. that stuff weeds itself out, too, man. Like, yep. like those types of people. Like, if I have a disagreement with somebody, and unless it's something I'm blatantly did, and where I become toxic is sports and shit. Where like, I'll argue fucking, you know, Barry Sanders, Emmett Smith, and Walter Payton all day, <laughs> Jordan, yeah. LeBron. That's where I get like, what are you talking about, right? <laughs> But I'm willing to bet that because I've only had problems with maybe three comics uh, and all of them I'm still cool with Mm. little disagreements. And then there were certain comics that were always having problems. Right. And they would sit in the back, they would talk. And then eventually uh, there was something that happened recently in another city where these it ended up because I'm, I'm willing to bet that if I had problems with this person and I'm not a comf- I'm not that type of guy, that person's probably had these type of similar things because I'm, I'm also old enough and mature enough to see what they're doing and where it's coming from. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense, you're willing to bet that there's going to be a line of that with other people. And you usually see that the mm-hmm. same people that are talking shit. Then you hear that there's people that, that are talking shit on them. And then they all end up, <laughs> yeah. And we can end on this expression. You can't soar with eagles if you're pecking with crows. <laughs> and that's another good expression. By the way, these are all fucking <laughs> shit I read on calendars and uh <laughs> and, and magnets. And, magnets. <laughs> <laughs> and fortune cookies and shit. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, you want to say anything before we go? Uh no, man. I'm good. I'm good. I just uh where am I gonna be? Where am I gonna be? I'm gonna be at the punchline in San Francisco the fourteenth or the seventeenth or eighteenth. Is that this up. weekend? No, it's uh, the uh, it's it's February. Oh it's well, you got you got to specify that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, no, wait. Today no, is the 16th. Yeah, today is the 16th. So yeah, so 14th, and then I'll be at the Sacramento Punchline the next weekend. So in in February. And uh, this weekend, if you're up in Northern California, I'm in Sunnyvale at Rooster Tea Feathers in the old Atari 2600, the birthplace of Pong, the first yes. home video game, is the building that Rooster Tea Feathers is in. I'm there Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then Sunday, if you're in Vegas, I'm doing, I started my residency at Jimmy Kimmel. I'll be there with my, my very dear friend, Butch Bradley. And uh, yeah, that's it. And remember, you can't soar with eagles. <laughs> and no farfanugan. All right. Make sure you call your moms. <laughs>